Hi everyone, here's our math problem for today. Find the square root of 4489 without using a calculator. You can pause the video and write in our comment section your answer to this question. Now let's solve this problem together. In this video, there are three examples that I'm going to show you in order to compute for the square root of a number without using calculator. In the first two, these are techniques when the given number is a perfect square. And in the third example, we are going to look at a number that is not a perfect square. So how do we find the square root of 4489? Here's the technique. Again, our assumption here is this is a perfect square. So the first thing that we need to do is remember what are some of the perfect squares from 1 to 9. You might be wondering why are there some red digits. Notice that the square of 1 is 1 and the square of 9 is 81. They have the same unit digits. The square of 2 is 4 and the square of 8 is 64. Again, you have 4 here and the unit digit of 64 is of course 4. The square of 3 is 9 and the square of 7 is 49. Again, they have the same 1's digits. And then the square of 4 is 16. The square of 6 is 36 and we have the same observation. The unit digit here is 6 and the unit digit here is 6. And 5 squared is 25. With this as our prerequisite knowledge, let's find now the square root of this number. First, it is implied that the decimal point here is after 9. And from that decimal point, count two digits to the left. And so we have this 89. Notice that the ones digit in 89 is 9. And in our table here, it is 3 squared and 7 squared with 9 as the last digits. So therefore, we have two possible choices here. 3 and 7 because 3 squared is 9 and 7 squared is 49 and we have this 9 here. Then let's move to the next two digits, 44. Look for a value that's closer to 44 here but less than 44. We have 36 close to 44 but 49 is already more than 44 so therefore we settled with 36 and that is equal to 6 squared. So let's get that 6. We now have two numbers here, 63 or 67 as the square root of 4489. Now, which between these two is the right answer? Now, remember that numbers that end with 5 are easier to square. For example, between 63 and 67, we have 65, and 65 squared can be computed this way. We square 5 to get 25. Next, get this 6 and multiply it by the number that is 1 more than 6, and that is 7, and 6 times 7 is 42. And so we have 4,225 compared to 4,489. Now, since this number is greater than 65 squared, then 63 cannot be the answer because we expect an answer that's greater than 65 squared. And therefore, 67 must be the answer. And to check, we multiply 67 times itself, and indeed, the answer is 4,489. So the answer is 67. Let's have another example of this. Let's say you are asked to find the square root of 12,996 without using a calculator. Again, our assumption here is we know that this number is a perfect square. Otherwise, we are going to use a different method. So let's recall again our table of squares. Then from the decimal point, find the first two digits, 96. This ends with 6. So we are going to choose 4 and 6. So we now have these two choices. Then we can move to 129. And let's extend this a little bit because we want a number that's closer to 129 but a perfect square. And that number is 11 squared. So we take 11 here. So for our possible choices here, we have 114 or 116. And again, let's take 115 as our test number because this is easier to square. We square 5 to get 25, get 11, and multiply it by the number that is 1 more than 11, and that is 12, and that is 132. So we now have 13,225 compared to 12,996. So this number here is less than 115 squared. Therefore, 116 cannot be our answer and so we settled with 114 and to check 114 times 114 is equal to 12,996 and so 114 is our answer now what if the number is not a perfect square let's say what's the square root of 180 in here 
we can use the division method. Now, in the long division method, here is the process. From the decimal point, group the numbers by 2. So we have 80 as one group, and 1 is alone, so we just let 1 by itself. Now, the first step is to find the square root of 1. You know, the square root of 1 is 1. When you write the square root of 1 here as 1, make sure to write that also here. And then you multiply 1 times 1 to get 1. And then subtract. 1 minus 1 is 0, and bring down 80. The next step is to double this partial quotient. So double 1 to get 2. And then we need to find a digit here so that you will form a two-digit number here. And whatever is the digit here in the blank must be the same number that we are going to put here in the partial quotient. That number must be 3 because 3 times 23 is equal to 69. If we take 4, 4 times 24 is already more than 80. So it's a trial and error. Then subtract. 80 minus 69 is 11. And since there's no more number to be brought down here, we know that there is a decimal point here. Let's put a decimal point here. And then put two zeros like this. Then you double this 13 to get 26. And then we need a digit here also that is the same as the number here so that when you multiply, that number is closest to 1100 but less than 1100. And that number must be 4 because 4 times 264 is 1056. And then we subtract. That is equal to 44. And let's put two zeros again. And then we double 134 to get 268 and put a blank here for the next digit. And that number must be 1 because 1 times 2681 is equal to 2,681. If we make this 2 and 2, that is already more than 4,400. And then we subtract and repeat the process. Now, this is bigger now. Double 1,341 to get 2,682. And then by trial and error again, find another digit so that this digit and the digit that we're going to put here are the same. And when multiplied, that will give us the closest number to this number. And that number must be 6. Because when you multiply, you get a number that's close to this number. And the process continues. And so the square root now of 180 is approximately equal to 13.416. With this experience, I know you appreciate your calculators now. Because without using a calculator, it would be very difficult to find the square root of a number that is not a perfect square. But when the number is a perfect square, our first two examples were easier to use, or you can also use other methods such as prime factorization, repeated subtraction, and of course, this long division method. So thank you very much, and we hope to see you again in our next video. Bye for now.